Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner for Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. Yes, I actually have the date right in front of me, so Yay! I can look. I know. Well, when you get to sit in front of your computer and uh, slough off today, um, as both myself and our my uh, co-facilitator Twinkling Tori get to do, then uh, it makes you sense. Know, yeah. What? You're supposed to be cooking along, Herbie. I am. There was a slight issue with getting some of the stuff I needed, so it's going to be Herbie's cooking this for dinner instead of breakfast. But oh, um, I see. So you're just taking notes for now. I'm going to take notes for now, but I'm going to be cooking it later <laughs> today, and um, we'll. I'll definitely tell you all how it turns out. But I know it's going to turn out wonderful because we've got an amazing person with us today. In fact, she is the reason for us being here. If it was not for this community, there would be no Herbie's Cooking Corner. And so it is that such... That would be an... sad. That would be. And so it is such an honor to have here, her on here. So please, everybody, rise. Remove your hats <laughs> if you're wearing them. Oh, dear heaven. <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Sunshine Hollis oh and her world famous God. potato salad. I'll tell you, I don't even know what I'm doing here, but we're going to have fun. So I've already pre-cooked some of my potatoes, but not all, because I wanted to be able to talk about what I do to do what I do. And so I'm going to ask you to hold questions unless you need something clarified. I am going to be as detailed as I can as I go along. The challenge for me really was putting a recipe together because I make this every time I just throw stuff together. That's just how I do it. But I will tell you, I've got water waiting for it to boil. I have most of my potatoes are cooked. I am cooking with about three pounds of potatoes. I did a pound and a half of baby potatoes. Those are already done. Uh, the nice thing about them is you can actually boil them while they're whole and cut them when they're cooked and they're a lot easier to cut if that is something that makes you uncomfortable because potatoes are pretty hard firm you know and and you uh, have to work at slicing them and dicing them that's just a little side tip but here i have a good old russet potato i wash them really good i do not peel my potatoes um, actually, most of the nutrients are in your uh, skin of your potato. And I heard that you get about 50% of like your iron and zinc and other stuff in one potato. So I take it lengthwise and slice down the center. And so I'm doing that. Then you could take your potatoes and lay them flat. So now you have two halves laying flat. I cut the, this in a third. So I'm going to kind of slice it at the one third mark um, down lengthwise and then another third mark. And now there's like three long pieces and then I'm turning it so that it's end to end away from me. This is one half and I am going to now cut these the size I want them. And you know, the nice thing about potato salad is that I'm now doing the same thing to the other one. The nice thing about potato salad is if you cut them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. It's okay because the smaller pieces will boil faster, cook faster, and they kind of will thicken your potato salad a little bit. And so these are all done and my water is boiling. I am gonna carefully take my cutting board over to the pot with boiling water. And I am sliding each half. I already had two potatoes sliced. And I am slowly dropping these in because I don't want splashing water on me. And there goes the last. And they are in there. I am going to go set a timer for 15 minutes. That's about how long it should take to boil. So uh, you get to hear me do that. Echo. Set a timer for 15 minutes. All right, that's with my water boiling and I put those potatoes into the boiling water. I am going over to the water and I'm just gonna stir these in so there's none just floating. They're all in that boiling water. All right, the next thing I am going to do is I am going to cut my onion. So. 
I want to talk about, I like using sweet onions. So I just get a bag of sweet onions. But if you're looking for an onion and you go to the store and just get a regular onion, I find that the flatter the onion, and so the ends are kind of closer together, the sweeter the onion is. I cut the ends off of the onion. And then I'm going to peel this over the garbage can. So let me go over to my garbage. I'm going to peel a good layer off because, you know, want all that papery stuff. And then just any of those, I don't even know what it's called. So, but you know, sometimes it gets a little slimy under the layers. I make sure that's all taken off. All right. And then what I'm going to do now is slice this onion in half. And again, lay down. Oops, there's a little piece of paper. Let me toss that. I'm going to lay the halves down flat side. And I will slice three. And I use, you know, people, knives. Let's talk knives for a second. And I'm dicing now. So I've got this half onion, which I've sliced. I've got about three pieces stacked on each other. And it allows me to just kind of move it and slice it. And I'm going to throw what I just sliced into my bowl. But I use my cutlery that I have here at home is Cutco. And it's a pretty pricey, but really good uh, knife set cutlery. And I'm mentioning it because you really don't want to shirk on your knives if you can help it. You want to use sharp knives. You want your knives to be really good and sharp. Um, it makes it a lot easier to cut with. And it also can cut you easily. And you might not even know you've been cut. But if you work really hard at cutting and you have to push down really hard, if you cut yourself, then you're going to do a lot more damage. You know, if you slice yourself with a sharp knife, it's almost like a paper cut. You might cause a little more blood. But if you slice yourself, if you cut yourself when you're pushing down hard with a knife, you can really do some damage. So that's really important to be using a good knife. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a real fast cutter, but I've, I'm almost done with a half of an onion. And I try to cut, again, I'm using a sweet onion. I have the last piece here. It's a little bit harder to slice it in half when it's a smaller piece, but I'm usually pretty good at it. And I got that done. I just will say real briefly, though, Cindy, you're doing a great job, and I really love uh, what you had to say about the uh, knives. I think that's very important for people to understand. So, yeah, spend I the agree. money. Spend the money on a good knife, even if you only have to buy one good knife. And you know, some people use different paring knives, and I like using a steak knife. That's just me, and I've got every fancy knife there is over here. So, all right, the next thing I'm actually going to cut up more of that onion. But for right now, I'm stopping there. So I want to talk about eggs. I use about one hard boiled egg per pound of potato. All right. So when I usually make a big potato salad, I'm using five pounds. I'm using about three and I'm going to use three hard boiled eggs. When I go to shell an egg, I want to talk really quick about hard boiled eggs. Once you're done boiling them, put them in a bowl of water with ice cubes. The colder the water, the better before you put them in the fridge. So um, that will make your life so much easier when you go to shell them. When you go to shell your egg, I roll, I, I hit it against the counter and keep moving it around. So it's like got kind of a shattered feel around it. And the peel will just fall off and often in big chunks. So I just took like this big couple pieces. Yep. It just came off in like two pieces just now. And Pardon then. Me, Cindy, Danettos yep. have a question. Okay. 
Okay, when you're cutting things like uh, cutting onions or that, do, would you recommend like using like, cooking gloves and such? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I've never used anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Personal right. preference, I guess. I have an egg slicer. They are pretty handy. If you don't have one, you can always use a okay. knife. Slice your egg in half lengthwise. Again, just like I've been doing with everything else. And you can slice it down the center, lay them flat face down. You can slice them then in half again lengthwise and then you know slice them the other direction so that you're getting your smaller pieces however i'm using a good old egg slicer and i put my egg in it both directions so i take it out while it's sliced one way and then turn it the other direction and it looks like a it's an egg holder it's got like a place for your egg and then the other half of it sandwiches down into it and it's like a rack it almost looks like a wrap or you know it's got wires that come down and it slices your potato so i just while i was just talking to you i just did my three eggs and i just tossed them in with my potatoes that i'd already pre-cooked i've already washed my bell pepper and that's what i'm going to next so I'm using baby bell peppers, so they're they're small. They're not much different than if you use your standard bell pepper. I like using red or orange bell peppers, but I'm not a bell pepper snob, so I would also use green. It's just the redder the uh, bell pepper, the sweeter it is. So if you're wondering about, you know, what's the difference, that is the difference. This again, not much different. I slice things down the center um, with the bell peppers. You need to um, clean the, the seeds out and you know cut the stem off. Really, you don't have to cut it off. You can actually just use your fingers and break it off at the end. Um, and then once I've done that, I will rinse the seeds out of it. So, and then these little ones, there sure is not very much. Um, I'm doing four small bell peppers. And um, just because they're not that big. Um, so, and again, I'm sorry if things take a little bit longer. I'm not used to doing this with a, You're doing just fine, Cindy. Indeed you are. And one other thing I will mention real quickly, um, like Cindy, I do not use any cutting gloves or anything like that. Um, if you have really good finger placement and you have a good knife, then you can do pretty good without having to uh, cut yourself, so. I don't use any either. I just be careful where my fingers are. Exactly. Do we still have a Cindy with us? Um, can you unmute Cindy? Uh oh. Um, well, folks, we are having some slight issues with our guest facilitator. I wonder if she got a phone call or something. Nope, I'm here. Yeah. I got okay, muted. yay. yay. I got okay. There you go. My phone was in my pocket and I um, and I had speech off. So it took me a minute to yeah. undo all of that. Uh, but anyway, um, what I was going to say is it's, it's, it's about placement, but be patient with yourself and take your time when you are slicing. That's, I mean, I really think that's the key. Um, you know, to uh, not cutting yourself. Um, and everybody does this differently. When I'm cutting this bell pepper, I have kind of the side of the knife touch my finger, um, like the flat part of my finger as it's bent. And um, this is when I'm dicing stuff that's smaller. Um, and I use my finger I kind of push my index finger 
almost a little further out than the rest of my fingers, um, but it's, it's going downward. So the flat part of that finger is touching the knife as it's pushing down, not anywhere near the blade, to be honest. Um, and, you know, sometimes if we're new to stuff like this, I recommend kind of playing with it without even cutting anything and just getting a feel for what you can be doing with that knife. Um, you know, things that are uh, harder to cut would be things like carrots, but bell peppers aren't very difficult because they're softer. Um, so their onions are maybe a little bit more challenging because uh, not necessarily the way I told you because you can cut it in half and lay it down. But the first cut probably is a little scary. Cutting the ends off might be a little bit challenging for some. Um, but, and you know, funny thing is I have no idea of how long it takes me to even cut uh, these vegetables. I guess I'm gonna find out because I started that um, timer, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see where I land up and what I ended up getting finished um, with my cutting. Um, but I've done the eggs, the bell pepper, I'm in the process of bell pepper, the onion. Uh, and once I get these veggies done, the other stuff is seasoning and it's squeezing and scooping. <laughs> so, uh, cause I use, um, I used to do dill pickle but I now use dill relish. Uh, it's just faster, easier. And I, I think it just adds more flavor. I was asking while I was muted, Herbie, what do you normally vegetable wise put in your um, potato salad? So I honestly have not ever made a homemade potato salad. I did once really? a long time ago. Really? Um, well, because you can always just easily buy it from the store or from a oh, restaurant. Oh, but it does not taste anywhere close to the same. No, it doesn't. No. Uh -uh. Don't be lazy with potato salad. Well, that's the same. why, well, that is, that's why, that that's why I invited him. an expert on here. So. Oh. And now you've shown him. He's got no excuse. And you're going to find stuff that you'll like that different than I do in mine. Um and potato salad always tastes better the next day. So, um, you know, letting it sit <laughs> and mesh together all those flavors, because it's not about, you know, you may not be a big onion person, but even a little onion. Oh, hang on just a second. I don't want to yell at you guys. Echo, stop. Echo, stop. Trust me, we've had a few conversations like that with uh, smart assistants on this call. So, so only so a don't few. Bad. Only a few. <laughs> so I'm almost finished with this bell pepper. My potatoes are still okay. going. I'm going to go check on them with a fork. I will try and grab one and just kind of get an idea of how they are because I wanted, I wanted to do this so that you guys could hear me actually taking the potatoes out of the pot and boiling water and, you know, um, so I could talk about colanders as well. Uh, where am I? There's my fork. Where's my fork? <laughs> I got pushed by my knife. How nice. Okay. I so I am right now at my potatoes. I'm going to just try and snag one. And if I can't get one to come up on a fork, that will, oops, oh, it will tell me that, okay, I'm taking one out of there and I am going to check and see how easy it cuts with a fork. And, and it, I'm gonna taste one. I'm gonna taste a little piece of this. Mm, I'm going to cook this a little longer. Um, so while I'm doing that, I'm going to just slice up the rest of this onion because this potato salad is going to be big enough that I need more onion. 
than I've got in there. I love that you use the same method as me to tell if your potato is dry. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, indeed. Sampling is a big part of... Um... Sampling is really important. Don't ever be afraid to sample. I mean, you want to be clean about it. You don't want to eat off of a fork and then put your fork back in. No. Your, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. But I cut a little piece off and threw it in my mouth. And that's what I did. Um, and I also and love the fact that you do not peel your potatoes. That's a, a very essential part of a potato is the peel. So it sometimes, is. sometimes I do peel mine. Sometimes I don't. I never peel them. I don't either. Not even for mashed potatoes. Nope. Um, I, I remember something. my kids, <laughs> they're both sided, of course, right? So they, the first few times I made potatoes, mashed potatoes with the skin, they would not eat them because there's dark stuff in there. Ugh, yeah. Um, yeah, how dare me. Well, but, over yeah. here, we normally would. Um, so it was only after I met my husband that I started hearing about the fact that people left skins on for things like mashed oh, potatoes. It makes your life so much easier. I know, right? Yeah, I didn't learn until my adult life either, and they made me learn how to peel potatoes, and that, that is one skill that I, I, I know how to do it, but it's one I never use because I don't believe in it. Um, it, it, it. I don't believe, well, it's extra work, but aside from that, you, it really adds to the flavor, and that's where the nutrients are anyway. So Yes, yes, and I have a really good potato peeler. Again, I got mine from Cutco, and... I, you know, I don't even remember how much things cost, but I want to say my potato peeler probably cost about $40. Uh, so it's not, it's not, again, not cheap. However, I will never need another potato peeler. And it is, it just slices them off. And it's amazing. Um, so amazing that I bought them for my daughters for Christmas. They're just very worth the money. So, so how um, did you train your kids to appreciate the skin on the mashed potatoes then? We didn't let you Well, they love potato they love mashed potatoes. So if that's how I made them, they had to learn to eat them, right? Oh, so that's it. Yeah. It's it it was what's for dinner. So the the old the old method of putting it in front of them and telling them they ate it or they went without. Exactly. And my girls both love potatoes. They love mashed potatoes, especially um I did dinner last night, had my daughter and family over. And of course we had, I made meatloaf and need, it needed eating. Yep. And um, so they came over for that and mashed potatoes and gravy. So there you go. Um, I, li I like to do garlic mash. And I, and I love how you gave an excuse for, you know, uh, a, a great advertisement for having children this morning. You, you know, you gave birth to a pair of eyes that can read the mail for you. I, I did. Now, of course, I would have found something else if they didn't, if their eyes didn't work, I would have found some other <laughs> logical reason to have I'm had sure. that. Um, I'm so. sure they ha would have had their uses regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and when they were, young young teenagers or preteens then it was because i had my own dishwashers right so um there you go but i am going to take these potatoes out um i have a gas stove by the way um and i thought i was going to hate it um i loved my flat top stove i had an electric stove in washington I loved it so much. It's so easy to clean. Uh, people worry about, you won't be able to know where the burner is, but you feel the heat. It's easy to center on. I loved it. Um, gas stoves were intimidating, uh, but to be honest, I love the gas stove now too. So um, I haven't learned to love mine yet. Oh, I love it. Okay. So I'm going to talk about this. I have a big colander. Uh, so it's got feet on it and it's sitting in my sink. I have my pot. I just carried it over to my sink. It has handles on either side. It's a pretty big pot. Um, I am holding each handle, uh, and I am going and I am going to dump this slowly away from me into the colander. So that's what I'm doing now. And you guys just heard it. 
I, or maybe you didn't hear it, but it it just went. <laughs> yep, we heard it. There was like a okay. slight yep, bubbling definitely sound. Definitely heard it. Yep, as it's going down the sink, and they are there, and I'm going to let them sit. All right, so next, next is going to be the dill relish. Um, I'm not a big sweet pickle person anyway, but sir, I mean, I can eat them, but they're not my favorite. But I, um, and I'm not a big pickle person, to be honest. Um, you know, if there's a dill pickle on the plate next to my sandwich, it's not something I'm going to eat. Um, you know, I just don't eat just pickles for that reason, you know, just because. Um, but I am using a, um, but it, it adds flavor. It's just that extra bit of flavor. I am using an eighth cup measuring cup. Uh, I have those measuring cups with the braille on them. And I was like only, me. I use about three tablespoons, but um, one eighth is two tablespoons. So I'm using this one eighth and I am just um, adding, they're not, I did two, two one eighth cups, but I did not fill them. I mean, they're close to full, right? But not exactly full. So just giving you an idea of that. And I'm going to put my relish away because I like to clean as I go. All right. This is the part that's pro probably the most challenging um, is the mayonnaise. I love my potato salad mayo. -y. And, um, and I just go by feel. So it's really hard for me to give you guys, and I'm using a wooden spoon and I'm tossing. Um, I'm scooping it out of, I have a big jar. It's from Costco. So if you know uh, those mayo jars and I use real mayo, um, none of this miracle whip crap. Yep. I use that word. She, um, she's a natural for this show guys. I'm, I'm just saying. And I am using Best Foods Real Mayonnaise, um, or it's also known as Hellman's. And I, this one is at the bottom of the jar, and I'm trying to get every bit of it that I can. I'm going to go open another one because that is not enough mayo for me. I was going to say, I like Hellman's. Make sure, make sure, they even oh, do a vegan version. I was going to say, um, you could uh, hold the jar upside down over the bowl and make sure you scoop it out that way. So it, you, I, I got it every, I did good. I'm All telling right. you, I got, but it's, this one's done, and I will get another. So, all right, let me remember. Oh, there it is. Oh, yay. Oh, the powers are with me um, because I was able to find the new mayo without any trouble, and I had not looked for it this week. So, uh, all right. Um, it always helps to take the the top off the um, plastic, the papery yeah. film. Yeah. I, I do find that helps a lot. For, okay. I, I will be honest and just tell you, I used my teeth to get it started. <laughs> yep. I've done that too. So, uh, oh, you know, and then I am peeling around the edge. So if you ever have those, you know, the, the coverings that are um, on your jars or whatever, and you, yep. I went to go check to find the relish this morning and I opened it and sniffed, right? And it didn't, I couldn't smell it. And I'm like, oh God, is this, did I misplace the, <laughs> the relish? I took the lid off and the, the little cap thing was still on it, the foil, you know? Yep. I was like, okay, that would not have, I would not have gotten much in the um, potato salad that way. So the other method I will use, especially with the mayonnaise jars, is I will like just use a sharp knife to poke like the center of yep, the paper. And then go around the edge yep. with the, the knife. Yep, me too. All right. So I'm going to say right now, I each scoop I think is about a half a cup. That's just my guesstimation. And I am throwing in probably, I'm going to guess about... 
I just did one more. So I'm probably about two cups. Uh, I'm going for more. You guys, I'm serious. I, I need my mayo -y. And I'm going to now throw quite a bit of pepper in here because I like pepper. So um, not throw, but I'm shaking the pepper shaker. And I'm shaking it with the mayo just now tossed in because I want, when I'm mixing this, I want my seasonings to mix in with, um, with the mayo. Uh, I'm also using, I have a blend and um, I don't know what kind it is, and, but it's a, it doesn't have salt in it actually. Um, and it's got garlic and onion and, you know, it's one of those kind of blends. And I am going to add a little bit of salt, um, but I don't do a lot of salt. And I want to have a little more control. And I'm a lot more generous with the other seasonings than I am with um, the salt. So that is just me, um, not a big salt person. And remember, I, and now I'm mixing. And I am using a Tupperware That's a Bowl, one of their big, I think it's like a I don't know, is it 12? I think it's a 12 cup bowl. It's big. And I'm using it because um, it's got high sides and I don't have to worry about throwing the potato salad. So I, I like a deeper bowl when I'm mixing potato salad so that it doesn't um, go everywhere. And I'm going to take these potatoes I just cooked and I'm tossing them there now into my potato salad as well. I just mixed some of this up and rinsing my mayo -y fingers. <laughs> um, I keep my hands clean and I'm not afraid to use them. So, um, and now it's about consistency. Um, so I am mixing everything is in this bowl now that I'm going to put into my potato salad. Uh, and this is one of those things that, you know, once it's done in about two hours, I will go taste it and see if I need to add anything else to it. Um, so it's, you know, again, I'm not using any set um, recipe, but it gives you an idea about uh, one sweet onion uh, for like three pounds. I would probably use like a one and a half if I did five pounds. So maybe it's like a, you know, anyway, yeah, you guys get the drift. Um, and then I use uh, one egg, one hard boiled egg per pound. I use one tablespoon of dill relish per pound. Um, and I probably use about a cup, almost maybe just under a cup, maybe two thirds of a cup of mayo per pound. Um, cause I think I used about two and a half cups, probably of mayo and the consistency is looking amazing. So, um, but this is the hard part cause it, thickens as you go and so you want to make sure you're using a really good tool when you're mixing it I like using a good wooden spoon just a, it's more of a flat spoon but it's it still can scoop and I toss to the center from the outer edge so when I'm mixing that's how I do it to try and get everything mixed together oh my god this is smelling so good this is like my favorite. I love potato salad. Okay, now I'm glad you asked me to do this. Um, I was dreading this, but now I'm, anyway. Um, and I only wish I could share all of this with you. So tomorrow uh, from our community, Tony and DJ are in the area and they're visiting Tony's daughters. And um, they're gonna come visit me tomorrow. So they're gonna get to try my potato salad. So if you really want to know if it's any good, 
you can ask them. Uh, Lucy has also had my potato salad. Um, so uh, you could also talk to her. And I've been making some along with you. Have you? Oh, wonderful. All right. With a couple of minor adaptations. Sure. For dietary sure. reasons, but yeah. All right. And I, it's done. And I think I used even the right amount of, I'm going to go find me a spoon so I can kind of scoop up um, a good chunk that has like lots of this. And you guys are going to have to hear me eat a bite of it because I just got to try it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Seriously, it turned out good. Um, mm, let me see. Do I want to add? Mm. I'm going to let it all sit. I'm not adding anything. Um, and I'll check it out in a little bit. Um, what you guys did not hear me doing, I usually am one of those that cleans as I go. So that would have taken me a little bit longer, but I'm usually rinsing, throwing things in the dishwasher. Um, but uh, yeah, um, and I'm now looking for the lid. There it is. I'm gonna put this mayo in the fridge so it does not get forgotten and left out. There's nothing worse than leaving something out. Somebody cited would have seen it sitting there. And then, and they, you come and back. then they moan at you. Well, if you don't have somebody sighted, seeing it sitting there, you go find it in another day or two and realize, oh gosh, when was the last time I used that? Yeah, yeah. it has to be thrown out, right? So, yeah. All right. I have no idea of how I'm doing on time, but I'm done. So, you um, are doing really well. It's not 38 past the hour. So, all right. So, if I anybody just... has questions, this would be a great time. So, all right. right. All right, so hold on real quick, guys. So while you're thinking of questions, just real quick, um, Tori, should we do your tips first or do you want to do yeah. questions? All right, yeah. so what we're going to do real quick is Tori's okay. tips where she's going to give us some um, alternatives for people that have dairy allergies and whatnot. And then we will get into the questions and that way we can incorporate um, all aspects for the questions. All okay, right, while Tori. she's doing that, I'm going to lick off this um, spoon that I stirred with. Sounds like a good idea. You mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> I, I fully so, wholehearted. And Cindy, you're natural. If you ever want to come back again, feel free. All right, mm. Tori. So first of all, I'd just like to say I made potato salad in the past, though it was a lot less ingredients and everything. And um, I think I'm going to go with this recipe in future, just saying, because uh, I've just had a little taste too. And yeah, anyway. So there's not really very many changes you need to be making if you've got allergies to worry about. Um, Hellman's does a vegan mayo. There are other brands that do vegan mayos. And I highly recommend Hellman's one though, because it's very, very good. Um, but whatever brand you prefer. And other than that, really, it's just a case of not using the eggs. If you want a protein source to put in place of the eggs, you could put some tofu in. But I just left them out personally because... Although I'm sure they'd have been a great addition, I didn't feel like cooking up the tofu to give it the consistency um, that would be required for giving the um, eggy experience without mm -hmm. having the egg. And there's other, you know, you can do other uh, other things. Um, uh, I've also put bacon bits in my potato salad, uh, and I, that adds a new dimension. I've also done garlic in my potato salad that adds a new dimension That's and it's not a bad one. Um, no. just, I might you know, have added right? garlic, but my dad's coming to get me in a bit. So mm -hmm. he's, he's got a garlic allergy so sensitive that even the smell of it makes him feel sick. So yeah. <laughs> and then I, I also, I've added celery um, in mine, uh, especially if you're not an onion person uh, celery can be a really nice addition as well because uh, there's got to be a little crunch in your potato salad Definitely. at least I think so mm -hmm. um, and so and then again you could also use you could also cut up your dill pickles some people would rather do sweet pickles that would make this totally taste differently um, so I'm um, I I would thumbs down on that but it's what people like and that's the important thing and that's the beauty 
of making your own mm-hmm. potato salad, right? As you get to yep. make it what you like it. So, well, normally I would just do the the mayo and the onion and the, the potatoes. Um, so adding the pepper and the um, the p- uh, pickle relish was yes. the addition for me, and it definitely adds a whole new dim- a dimension. That you'll I really notice with. it after it's sat for a while. Um, it really those, those were. Right. Just to add a little extra flavor. Yeah. All right. And on that note, guys, let's go over to our questions. So, Monica, now you may uh, let us know who has their hand raised. Yes, Sheila has a question. <laughs> Hello, Sheila. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question. That salad seasoning, is it called the, is it the, the um, oh, shoot. So, it's not a salad seasoning. It's just an all-purpose seasoning, you know, okay. like, like like a like, Mrs. Dash. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, the okay. one I'm using right now was not Mrs. Dash, but it's very similar to that. And do you know if it has celery salt in it in the combination? I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but I love celery salt, so yeah, I'm okay if it did. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's typically they do because they're like that all-purpose. They have the onion, the celery salt, the pepper, you know, garlic. The, right. They're... And but they don't have the pepper. So yeah. I mean the this salt. Is, yeah, Excuse this me. this one is salad supreme. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm no, gonna check nice. out what's in it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good job. Thanks. Okay, next we'll go to Diane. There we go. Um well I, I think if I were making this salad, I would have to leave out the eggs and I would want onions and celery in it. Um, I'm wondering about your potatoes. You said that you used um, some small potatoes and I'm yeah, wondering- Yeah, you can get these baby potatoes. They're, they're not very big. They're like the size of a hard boiled egg or smaller. Um, I think they, they sometimes get listed sometimes as called new boiled, potatoes. New potatoes, boiling potatoes. They're, they're smaller. Um, I wonder if you fingerlings maybe or or I don't know I don't know but when I've ordered them they were just called baby potatoes they come in a pound and a half bag and uh, but I also use some good old russets I actually love using red potatoes but they're a little bit more challenging to cut because you don't cut they don't have a lengthwise right they're 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 not shaped like your standard potato which a uh, you know standard potato is more like oval right uh-huh. um uh-huh. and a red potato typically sometimes they're shaped like a heart and sometimes they're you know what i mean like an apple or um yeah they they're just different shapes so that's what i normally use i just love using a red potato but uh-huh. this one is with the russets i've also used baked baker's potatoes like the baked potatoes those big ones mm-hmm. well you you don't have to use very many of them but um oh echo stop guess what that's telling me it's time for I, the coffee clutch that's what it's telling me <laughs> get, but i don't do that one now um as lee says facilitator so but i i need to cancel that uh now <laughs> So, but still go there um, and and join in the coffee clutch we, for we, sure. We, we heavily promote the the coffee clutch yes. on this call. Yeah. So. Yes, we, we always oh, tell right. people they should go to the coffee clutch after this call. By, by uh, the way, we absolutely. are also a fan of the Cutco. We have a whole knife block full. Me of them. too. I do too. I have the big knife block. So yep. I have table knives and steak knives. They're, yep. They are similar but different. Steak knives are bigger. And I have every kind, and I have the scissors. So if you were to buy just a couple of tools, if I could share this really quick, tools that I think every kitchen needs to have, really good pair of scissors. So kitchen scissors. And, you know, if you don't have the money to buy Cutco ones, which run over a hundred dollars, I understand that, but they, they are amazing, and Cutco does have, like, a payment plan. So, um, And they'll last forever, and they can cut a penny in half. So they're pretty strong, um, and they work really nicely to cut things like um, – oh, I use them, like, if I'm doing green onions, for example. You know, you get a bunch of those. 
and uh, you can just kind of cut them over your bowl and not have to use a knife. Um, and so, I mean, things like that, it makes it really nice. And then a really good potato peeler and a really good can opener. And I have gotten all of those from uh, Cutco plus several other items, but I just think those are pretty important. Um, you don't want to fight with any of those things. So anyway, thanks, thanks Diane. <laughs> Who's next, Monica? Jeanette has a question. All the art. Okay, so kind of funny. When you were saying Cutco, it sounded to me like you were saying Petco, and I know you're not getting kitchen scissors or potato peelers it's from Petco. C-U-T-C-O. C-U-T-C-O. I know, it can be confusing because so we anyway. got Costco, Petco, and yep. then we got Cutco. So. Yeah. So anyways, um, tomorrow, well, Saturday, I'm going to a picnic, and I'm making German potato salad mm -hmm. and it's basically the same thing except I leave out the eggs and the mayo and I'm doing the, the onions the peppers and celery and with balsamic vinegar vinegar and yellow a yellow mustard to since it's going to be like an outside picnic thing so mm -hmm. so, shouldn't so it's not salad have nine uh, ingredients great. okay and it's not ha ha ha. Uh, it's not the same though, because I nine I, Herbie. That was not funny. I, it would not. No, taste it, the it's same. not the same because there's another mayo. So yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Big difference for me, but <laughs> all I right. Like the bacon in it too. Maybe. So, mm -hmm. um, so real quick question. Somebody asked me yesterday, and I told them they needed to come on the call and ask you about this. Um, and I don't remember who it was, and I so I don't even know if they're on the call. Um, but the question was asked uh, if you use have ever used mustard in your potato salad. I do not use mustard in my potato salad because I don't like it. Um, I mean, I like mustard on like a corn dog, and I like mustard on corned beef. But in my potato salad? salad, I don't care for it. I don't like the flavor it adds. And I would rather add more dill pickle um, to it if it needs it. But I like my potato salad more mayo-y, as I mentioned. In case you didn't know, yeah, I like mayo-y potato salad. So. We do have more yeah, questions you like for you. Salad okay, mayo, we got right? more questions. So All right. let's get to them because we're running out okay, of time. Okay, Merle. Merle? Okay, am I unmuted? Yep. You are. Okay, I, I I just came in when she was starting to mix it, so I didn't hear. Did you do you put green onions in your potato salad? No, I put sweet onion, sweet oh. onion, and bell pepper. Okay, when I make mine, I use regular. I use onions and green onions because I mm -hmm. like the color. I like the color and the, and the flavor of the green onions. Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. I'll tell you That's... one person who I'm pretty sure does use green onions. That would be Booker T. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> I like green onion. I just don't normally put it in there. Um, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, um, what I, uh, that's what I normally use. Is just the two different types of onion. But mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you guys have a good day. It sounds like a good potato salad, other than the mayo. I don't care for mayo. So that's I have the heart of it all. I use I use the miracle See, whip myself. Uh, Merle, with the all right, I would normally have been using just the mayo, but with the other stuff added, the um, like the relish and stuff. The mayo taste is not quite as um, powerful yeah. no, as it is normally yeah. because it's got the other flavorings. Oh, so yeah. I, even I if use, you're not a huge mayo fan, you should definitely try it. I yeah. use I use the, the pickle seasoning and the pickles and all of that in mine, too. I mean, well, I I'll, use all, right. all, all I'm going to say for the Miracle Whip, you know, uh, Merle, you work at the wood shop, but I think we need to take you to the wood shed for using <laughs> Uh, uh, no. Miracle Whip okay. is not, it's more of a dressing to me and it's too sweet, yeah. but all right. Thanks, Merle. Thanks, Who's Merle. next, Monica? Larry and or Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Larry and or Kathy. Hmm. Um, Why don't we go to the next person? So okay, we we'll go to Sandra. Hand. Hello, Sandra. Hi guys, can you hear Hi, me? Hi Sandra. Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, yeah, you were mentioning about your scissors um, yes. and you put them in a block and so on. How do you keep them sharp? Uh, I'm talking about normal small scissors as well as the full-on 
kitchen one. So unfortunately, I can't really answer that. I um, use the Cutco scissors and they have a lifetime guarantee and they'll, they will sharpen them for me if I need them done. Oh, uh, so you, you, know, you send them somewhere to do that then? If, you well, they, would, they actually can come out and uh, a, a salesperson and they can actually sharpen stuff for you. Um, but they, I've had these scissors for probably 20, uh, so in 2022 years. I've had them sharpen wow. one time. That is good. So, yeah. But for yeah. regular scissors, Sandra, you can get a, a, a sharpening tool. Sharpener, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's meant for knives. It's kind of rounded type tool thing. My knife block actually came with one and that would work. You just run it, kind of run it along the edge. And where did you get it from, Lakeland or? Um, I will have to ask my mother because she, she got them for me she just got me a decent quality it might even be a shogun set actually okay brilliant thanks guys great call thanks okay larry were you able to unmute (laughs) make sure you've hit that got it button all right in the meantime do we have Um, anybody else there's nobody else Sometimes you, if you're on a computer, they normally don't come on the computer, though. Um, so I don't know. Monica, can you yeah. send them the prompt to unmute, see if that helps? Yes, sometimes it does help. Well, in the meantime, guys, so we're uh, Cindy is the first in the set of guests people we're going to have. Um, in a couple of weeks, Dorlin, who you know from the uh, Braille calls that she does with Liz, wanted to come and talk about cooking from a as a normal sighted person to what it's like to cook after losing her sight so we're going to have her on the call here and um tori will definitely be able to relate to her a little bit more in that and then the following week our very own kayla La, who you know from the crafty calls and the acb presents she is going to be showing us how to make homemade hamburger buns and i will be listening I, I cannot wait for that one. Me yeah. either. So that'll be the second mm-hmm. week in the September. And um, we may make that call a little bit longer just so we have enough time to talk about how to make homemade hamburger patties as well. So we're working out the logistics of that one. And I think we should definitely do that. Yeah. All right. So I'm getting told by my co-facilitator. I do what she tells me. So uh, you... Good boy. <laughs> um so that'll be the second week in september also uh heidi wants to uh put us in the our her web and um think she's going to probably do either the mushroom burgers or the strawberry cloud pie so we will talk to her about that and get that set up next week though i will be returning to the kitchen as i believe we actually do have a final tuesday in august uh, the 30th we do, yes Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, I will be making a recipe that I just recently came across called baked sweet and sour chicken. So, um, Which I will be making the tofu version of. Yep. So uh, I will be back in the kitchen next week. And don't think I'm taking it easy, guys. I just started back school. So I've got plenty of other stuff to keep yeah, me busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Excuses, excuses. I know. But I will be back in the kitchen at some point once everybody gets tired of um, doing my call and they decide to do their own instead. <laughs> um, no. Cindy, you did a fantastic job you use you know pretty much the same stuff that i use you know right down to the hellman's mayonnaise i did i I, I have a big jar it is and that's why they call it best foods as well i have the walmart jar not the uh, costco jar but it's still big it's like 48 ounces so yeah unfortunately they only do the vegan one in small jars it's really annoying so herbie i just want to say thank you um i was i i had a little bit of anxiety doing this and i We'll just say, this is good for me. Uh, it's good to step out of your comfort zone. I ask it of people all of the time. So most of you in the community <laughs> who are doing stuff for the community, whether you're facilitating a call or hosting, uh, a lot of you, not most of you, but a lot of you have probably received a little nudge and encouragement from me because I knew you could. And um I should have given myself some of my own advice, and well, we just uh, helped you do that. <laughs> we did, but and thank we weren't you. Even trying to. It was really fun. I had a good time, and uh, I am glad I cooked some of those potatoes ahead of time. 
but I did, I did want to still be able to demonstrate slicing the potato. So I think it all worked out good. Thank I you. I think it did. Well, if you ever well, want to make And I'm going to have a potato salad to eat. Yeah. Oh, yay. Well, uh, definitely let us know if you'd like to make a, a future guest appearance. Um, we're more than Which welcome. we hope you would in, like to. Yes. I'll keep it in mind. All right. Uh, join me later tonight, folks, at 7 o'clock Central, which is 8 o'clock Eastern Time for Apple Bites, where I'm going to be talking about apps and everything you want to know about them, including how to download them to your iPhone, deleting them, what are app purchases, like the paid apps versus in-app purchases, you know, stuff like that. So make sure you join me for that tonight. Also, tomorrow night, you hear them constantly talking about it on ACB Presents. So we're going to get the uh, bug out of them once and for all or accelerate it to other people. I don't know what's going to happen. But Chanel and Darcy are going to be talking about Wordle on the online accessible games call. So um, and a lot of other great calls happening throughout the community. If you've not done so yet, you need to send that email to community at acb.org and say, hey, uh, guys, could you please add me to the uh, community call list and just make sure you include your name and email address and that'll make it a lot easier for them. And they'll be very excited that you did. They will be. Um, you know, with we're getting to, what is it, our millionth call or is it like, Six thousand, I forget. It's a lot. It's a big number. So, and um, we'd love to have you. We're nearing ten thousand. Ten thousand. I was going we'll to say it's at least ten thousand. We're going to hit ten thousand at the end of September if we continue the way we are. So, excellent. Yay. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Cindy, for joining us today. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, Deb, for streaming. Thank you, everyone who uh, came to listen, participate, no matter how you uh, tune in via the live stream, Zoom, podcast. We are very glad to have you. And um, Cindy, like I said, you did a sunshine job. <laughs> Coffee Clatch is next hour, guys. Hope to see you all there.